The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody. Buddy and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Big Dog Woof Woof, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. You know, here what? at my brother, my brother, and me industries, yeah. the word of the day, the word of the year, the word of the business is, of course, innovation. We're right. always looking for new ways to help you, the listener slash consumer. And for a while and there, it was skin, you said at the beginning of the year it was skinovation, and me and skinovation. Juice, me and Juice yes. were like, "What's that?" And you were like, "Poly weave fibers, uh, nano fiber weave on your skin that makes you bulletproof and swordproof." And we were like, "That's <laughs> that's not real, bud." Yeah, but then you guys just brought me a lot about nudity, like a lot oh, about nudity and new kinds of nudity, internal nudity. Yeah, you said. spelled it N E W D, which I liked. Don't get me wrong, I yeah. liked that. Right, um, yeah. but this time I figured out a new question okay. that I think will help us answer questions for advice and maybe help the people at home. And it's right. simple. And that question is this: Would a sign help? And I was going through the question list today, right? I was making it, and I thought how often that could be, you know those like flow charts of answers they have where it's just like, you know, is it this? If yes, then this. If no, then this, right? And I think that we could ask, would a sign help? And that will be a good starting place for a lot of questions. Like a sign, like a Bill Ingvall situation. Or, I mean, listen, I don't want to limit what kind of sign? It could be a mm-hmm. billboard. It could be a traffic sign. Uh, it could be okay. just like a written poster board thing, uh, right? Okay. But if we can start from, would a sign help? We can build off of that and give ourselves right. a bit more of a foundation, a, a foundation of rock, if you will, instead of sand. Okay. Which is where I feel we've been in the past. It sounds like maybe you just watched that that three billboards outside Bing Bong, Wisconsin, and. You are <laughs> no, all fired. That. I have, Certainly that's not the title of it. I haven't watched two billboards yet, so I don't want to get yeah. to the third. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> Damn, that would have been a good joke when that film was relevant a few years I back. I know, eh? right? Oh, Where man. was that? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's a short movie, too, because it's just Frances McDormand, and she's already sweaty for putting up the first billboard, and she yeah. puts it up, and she's like, damn, this... I'm still not satisfied. Roll credits. Yeah, oh, I gotta get some more billboards. Gotta I'm gonna need at least one more. This first one says, fuck Woody Harrelson. And the next one says, for real though. But I feel like I need a third one that's like, for real though. And then, well, I'm waiting for four billboards where the fourth one just says, you just missed those last three billboards. Yeah. And that way it's time to turn around and go back. Does Francis McDormand's awesome billboard slamming Woody Harrelson work? Just did. <laughs> Say something like that. <laughs> I yeah. I wish I had more. I wish people did that to Woody Harrelson all the time for different reasons all over the country. Oh, that's good. I wish it wasn't just his character. I wish it was like About make him? another zombie land, Woody. Yeah, Woody. Hey, Woody. <laughs> hey, Woody, make a third zombie land. I didn't watch the second one because I want to watch the trilogy yeah, all yeah, in yeah. one setting. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I'm How, waiting until they show him back to back in the it. movie theaters, you know? Yeah, as was intended. How's Matt, Matt McConaughey doing, bud? And you put it right outside his house. Not... Matt McConaughey's house, but Woody Hey, Griffin. Yeah. Is Matt McConaughey going to be your governor? Matt McConaughey would be, I would say, a step up. Maybe not the ideal candidate for the job, 
But right now, the candidate for the job who has the job is a real stinker. So a, real stinker. A, a, a bucket of wet hamburgers pushed down a flight of stairs would be a better governor than you got right now. That's not a f- unfair comp- comparison. It's not an unfair thing to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I shit, man. If that's what, it, if that's the way but, we go, if that's the way we go with it, I can. But can we talk about how it directly affects this program? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If Matt McConaughey becomes your official governor, he's basically, it should be noted, already the governor of Huntington. Yeah. Because he made a movie about Marshall here. And he's 12 basically years all ago, of our, I think. Yeah, like 100 years ago. And he's now all of our dads. Yeah. But like, if he becomes your, the governor over there, you know, sure. like. Well, we wouldn't call him that. Yeah. But like, what happens to this program, my brother, my brother, me, if, if frequently there's something going on where Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and McConaughey is your governor. I mean, I'm just worried that it's going to eat up his time to make car commercials and stuff. Like when that's oh, he'll all, find it. he'll, he'll get yeah? there. Okay. Yeah, the, that Lincoln money. That Lincoln money I, spins. Yeah, Austin's got beautiful rolling hills. For is that because he was the Lincoln lawyer? That Lincoln was like, oh yeah, shit. I think that's perfect. what it yeah, was. I so. Okay, I think it's at least how it started. Okay, he, they, he thinks he's still filming the movie. Yeah, he's like, when's that Lincoln lawyer sequel gonna arrive? All right, all right. All right and if you, right, when right, Lincoln right, Lawyer right, Two right, comes right. out, if you haven't watched all the Lincoln car commercials. Commercials ARG, <laughs> you're gonna have missed out on a lot. <laughs> you got to, to follow the hunt of the car of the man behind the wheel dot org, yeah, forward slash Matt McConaughey for gov with four V's. The adventure begins, <laughs> the adventure begins there, and at the end, you win a coupon for a scre- free scoop at Baskin Robbins, yeah, which is nice. I hope he has um, your vote. I don't know his. Can I be honest? I don't know don't Matthew know McConaughey's his politics. Don't know his platform. Doesn't matter. He's Matthew McConaughey. I can fill is, in the blanks a lot. Yeah, I bet he's part of the uh, Green Party. You know what? I hope he's not a member of. All what? right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's really good. Fuck! It took a while to get there. That's awesome. I, yeah, see really a good. sign helped. Yep, you're right. I'm an artist, and lately I've been studying architecture as a hobby. Cool. I live within biking distance. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Badass. Doesn't it seem like that would be? That's one that I wish I could sit down for like an hour and be able to point at buildings and be like, "Hmm, neoclassical." Oh, oh right, 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 right. Wouldn't that be cool? Now, here's the thing, Justin. Can I tell you something? Ninety nine yeah. percent of the time, you can do that. Because yeah. the person you're talking to, chances that they know if you're right or wrong, very slim. But, but I know, yeah. and that's gonna that's not gonna boost my confidence. Well, you just I walk live... down the street and be like, "Ooh, that's a big one." Ooh, yeah, another, like that ooh, one. Ooh, another red. big one. It would be like if imagine the time I've spent learning about Disney World was applied to the Anything real world. Useful? Oh yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah imagine yeah. if the way I am when we walk around Disney World, I'm like, you know, that's actually the is the 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 letters on that window advertising that fake business are actually a reference to one of the original lawyers of the Disney World team. Imagine if I was like that, but like for but like smart shit, like smart Justin, shit. That's how an yeah. architect feels when they're walking around Disney with you, and they're like, "Why did I waste why all this I, time learning yeah. about architecture? I could have learned about Disney like Justin does." He's so cool. Yeah. It'd be so but cool. But it's got though. architecture in it too, is the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? And very rarely does architecture have <sighs> Disney in it. Just imagine walking around Chicago and pointing out the big buildings and be like, mm, yeah, that's a mid century David Hyde Pierce. Man, remind me to tell you guys about the email we got about Fraser's theme song. No, no, I know. <laughs> I live within biking distance of a couple of old slash architecturally interesting slash weird houses, and I would love to sit and draw them and take some notes on the architectural features. However, I don't think this would endear me to the occupants very much. How can I complete my self-directed studies without coming off as a huge creep? That's from suspicious student in Stony Brook. Okay, can I ask a stupid question? Yep. And it's very obvious, so it must be like a stupid... Yeah. Like, why... What is the, I don't know, I don't do like this kind of art, I'm more of an audio artist. Yeah. How, how does, why can't you just take a picture and then draw based on the picture? Good question. So I actually, in college, um, as part of a scene design class, we had to go and like draw buildings on campus. And it's about like angles and getting the right, uh, like getting the right perspective so the that you can compare and, lines yes. compared to other things and changing your point of view and shit like that. Yeah. Um, and with, so you got to kind of do it. Well, with a photo, you don't always get the 
depth uh, yeah. that you can. Damn, like, there do should it. be a way to like have photos that like fucking move. move. Yeah, so you can like get the. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's also photos. not as fun. As you well, know, yeah, it's not as fun, but it's also not going to get you put into artist jail. Yeah, which is where we put people who do art. Well, so here's the question. Yeah, would a sign help? Mm, that mm. sign. If you just had a sign set up next okay, to you. Okay, wait a minute. Now wait. This is a good question to start asking. If you put up a sign that said, basically, like <laughs> doing art, building artists over here, yeah, building art, building artist, ask me anything, yeah. and then a little hat, because I think people are more comfortable if commerce is involved. They understand. Yes. They get right, the they motivation at that. that point. Wait, you're just doing this to make yourself happy? No. Yeah. What about this? I will draw. Okay, I got. I got. I got. I got it. You sit down, uh -huh. you get your pad, your pen, a cup of joe, and then you start drawing the houses, right? Yes. And then you have a sign that says, I will draw this building for $5. Yeah. Okay. And if someone comes over and they're like, here's $5, you just be like, choice, thanks. Here's the building. I'm on it. <laughs> working on it. I'm on it. I'm working on it. And they'll be like, should I come back later for my drawing? It's like, you don't get the drawing. I'm just, I'm drawing. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, $5, my, I'm drawing the building. I'm not offering anything. I'm asking. Yeah. And you don't get, you, it doesn't matter if anyone ever does it because you never see a, like a caricature artist is always, you see them sometimes at Disney World, a caricature artist is always sketching something. Yeah. Usually They'll never the show you, of course. But they don't just sit there and stare at you until like, you, hey, you've got a great chin for caricature. Come on over. Like, they're working on stuff. You're always interrupting a caricature artist. Are there caricature artists? that it's weird how many times a caricature artist? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Both of you are talking at once. Griffin, you had a question. Do you? Th What's your question? Do you think that there are caricature artists, and that's the ones that do house drawings, but they do them all exaggerated and silly? Like, the windows oh, are, Griffin, like, wicked big? I regret. I regret coming to you, Griffin. Now we're going to hear what Travis had to excellent, say. Excellent. Do you think it's really frustrating when you're like Beyonce and you sit down at a caricature artist and the caricature artist finishes and Beyonce's like, I'll take that, please. And the caricature artist is like, no, this is really good. I'm going to put it up to display my talent. And Beyonce just has to walk away without her drawing. But I don't think that yeah. Beyonce usually does sit for those kinds of... Yeah, but they always have one of Beyonce, don't they? Yeah. So at some point she wants to come by. They got Terminator. They got Beyonce. Because as Travis has just explained to us, it ex excruciating detail. Yeah. You can't draw based on a picture of Beyonce. Correct. You gotta have the Beyonce angle. right there. That's why they look like they do. Yeah. They drew from a picture so and they're like, oh no, the perspective's all wrong. Her head is giant. Shit. Wouldn't it be so funny if Charlie Chaplin walked up and he was like, I'll take that one of me, please. That's really I'll be good. suing you. you. That's me, sir. I'll, I'll pur purchase this. And then Gil also, why did you draw me knowing this? And then fucking <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey walks by and drops off a picture of himself that is just the same one picture that every character artist has. He's just walking around the country dropping those off like Johnny Apple has seen. He drew them himself, and he's like, you can display this as your work. And they're like, I guess. Okay. If you're outside somebody's house drawing it, would a sign help? And this, But the sign says like, hey, I'm not jerking off out here. You mm, guarantee mm. nothing. Everything is above board. I'm just sketching for a non jerk off application. Promise, promise, promise to the max. But damn it, somebody could wear that sign that and be jerking off. That is gonna plan on doing that shit. Well, this is the this is one of the intricacies of the question. Would a sign help? Because yeah, like if you just wrote, "I'm drawing the house," right? Yeah. That's not as bad as. I'm drawing the house, Stephen Johnson, who lives in it. Yeah. Now, now it's weird. Now, now it's a it's problem. Bad. We need to get these signs notarized. Yeah. yeah we need a yeah, sign yeah, that yeah. says, hey, I'm not jerking off down here. And then there's like two signatories on the bottom and like a seal from the mayor that's like, yep, he's not, he's not jerking off out here. He's just drawing. I promise. Trust me. I'm the mayor. How about another question? Yes. I know this is unorthodox. Okay. But why not? Okay. Well, I would do actually, it, yeah. like, can I do this WikiHow article? Because let me tell you something about this fucking website, guys. <laughs> let me tell you something why about would this. Why you let me get Well, so no, but let me tell you. That was so much wasted time I know. now. But listen, I got to tell you something about this website. It uses more fucking RAM on my considerably beefy rig than Ableton. Then the 90 Audacity windows I have open, then uh, I could be running fucking Halo 9 on this PC 
or uh, on, on on my computer, and it would fucking not use as much RAM as WikiHow. My fan is screaming because it's like, look at all these poor images. It's, it, so I, I want to finish this and close this so that the audio will be better. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, good. I, I, I found this one on WikiHow, and it's about cat behavior, communicating with cats, which is okay. a, a rich, rich vein on WikiHow. I think it's maybe just because people like to draw kitties. And the title of the article is How to Apologize to a Cat. Thank apologize you. to a cat. Step one. I missed my cat's birthday and I've been wondering. Oh, well, this is going to be great for you. This is more about like I accidentally, you know, you know, bumped into him in the middle of the night and pissed him off or whatever. I rubbed their fur the wrong way because I've never touched oh. a cat before. So more physical sliding and not so much <sighs> emotional. Exactly. Determine the yeah. offense. What did you do to make your cat matter? Did you make fun of her? You fucking stupid Oh, cat. okay. Wait. You're, I'm back in. Yeah. If you offend your cat by making fun of her, you'll probably have to offer some treats and praise. Yeah, your cat's mm-hmm. definitely understands English enough to say, like, your butthole stinks, Mr. Ch- Chiskers. <laughs> choose- <laughs> Sorry, what's the cat's name? Mr. Chiskers. And then- <laughs> Chiskers. Got it. You gotta choose a good time to apologize. If the cat's angry, not now. Approaching too if soon. If the cat's maybe. busy. If the cat's busy, not right now, it's Steven. I'm on the phone. <laughs> This is an important call. Yeah. I told, now it's even worse. Listen, don't approach too soon because you might get scratched, but don't wait too long mm-hmm. to apologize because cats definitely will think about that stuff. You can approach a frightened cat, but do so with caution. I'm I'm not busy right now, but I'm fucking terrified. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. I'm sorry I called you. I was you. just listening to Creepypasta. I don't have time. I I'm can't. I'm listening to Creepypasta on the internet, Stephen. Please. Walk slowly to the cat. Don't rush up on it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Soft, gentle. Talk to your cat. Tell her, I'm sorry. You may even use your cat's name. It will not understand either of those things, I bet. Tr- but try blinking slowly because cats love that shit. Jackson Galaxy. <laughs> Wait, how Galaxy, slowly? Be, be clear. Slow as you can. Slow as you can. Oh, Jackson boy. Galaxy taught that to the world back in like 2007. And every, it's the only thing people remember about cats. <laughs> stroke your cat gently in her favorite spots my cat's fucking terrified and I ran up on it real fast but I know exactly where I touched this little guy so it's okay scratch behind the ear behind the cheek it's all good play with the cat these are all good things give the cat some attention praise and compliment your cat give your cat what he or she wants within reason now okay into something. Yeah. my cat now wants a car this. my cat fucking hates the way that I talked about his, his stinky butt, but, but I am going to give it $100,000. I am going to give it one night where it rules the house and it eats food in the kitchen and I have to mm-hmm. shit in its bad box. <laughs> um, now, here's one thing I know about cats is that levels are very important. That's why uh, cat trees are a thing. Yeah. And so it's a way of cats to show like they're more important than other cats. I'm in charge. So when you're apologizing your cat, lay down flat on your belly with your arms at your side and kind of inch forward a little bit yeah. so your cat knows that you're putting it above you. So then we have four entire sort of paragraphs here where the, the WikiHow article artist was like, J. Jonah Jameson was like, I need fucking... Uh, I need 18 column inches. And they're like, oh, shit. Well, here's four tips that are all variations on give your cat a treat. Give a treat to your cat. <laughs> Leave a cat treat surprise for your cat. Add treats to your cat's food. Treat your cat with some special food. Good, good, good. Now, hold on. I want to go back to number two. Yeah. Because the problem is if you leave a surprise treat somewhere, it might not associate that treat with you. No. Awesome. I'm having a shit day. Steven's been a real jack off. Tried to run up on me. Blinked too fast. What's this? Talked about my butthole. Talked about my asshole. Didn't even apologize. What's this? What's this? What's this? A special surprise unrelated to Steven. Offer some dried catnip. Uh, okay. Hey, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm not man enough to apologize to my sweet Mr. Chiskers, but I won't get him fucking fucked up. And then maybe when he's in that state, he will be more amenable to apologize. Yeah, what'd you do, Steven? You talked about my asshole? I don't even remember, man. Forget now, it. hold dude. on. You joke at that, but this is a thing humans do to other humans. Like, I'm going to take you out to a drink to apologize. That yeah. is a thing humans do to other humans. And then y'all watch the tail. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. If the tail is pointed up with the tip curled to the side, that cat's okay to come. Poofed up cat, the cat's frightened, which, as we learned earlier in the article, not entirely a deal breaker. If he's thumping it, though, no, 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 no. 
Walk right away. No, no. Walk right. What away. if his tail uh, makes the perfect shape of a question mark? Yeah. Mm, that means he's got a puzzle for you. Follow Ooh. him. <laughs> Follow the cat, and don't stop following it until you've reached the puzzle, because it's somewhere. Look at the okay. face. That's helpful. Are the whiskers pointed, teeth bared, and nose wrinkled? That's 101 angry cat stuff. So don't that's, do that. Anything's angry. If anything did that, I'm like, that's a problem. Yeah. Now, I want to hop down to the community Q&A because someone asked, is there a quick and easy way to apologize for little things? Which is fucking awesome. You read this whole yeah. article and you're like, that's too much time. I can't approach a cat slowly. I'm a businessman on the go. I got stocks to trade and houses to close on. I can't, I can't walk up on my cat slow and then blink slow. I'm not made of time or money. You can just say, sorry, cat name in sweet, apologetic voice and pet them gently on the spot they like. So sort of a condi- that's the only two points on this list that really matter. Do you think it's just generating, like, if you're still clicking through, mm. it'll just keep, keep making questions? There's like, an a- there's like an AI that's, like, generating answers, like, do another one about treats. Yeah. They're still clicking. They're still, They're still looking. I just took my cat to the vet, and they had to give him a shot. Now he's mad at me and scared me. What do I do now? You fucking say to the cat, like, I'm sorry, I don't want you to fucking get a heart disease, Mr. Chiskers. Yeah, you can be yeah. pissed off if, at me if you want because I gave you an expensive shot so you don't die from cat's diseases. <laughs> of which, Mr. Chiskers, I will say, there are thousands. And sometimes they sound fucking made up by the vet who's just trying to sell you medicine. Sell you shots. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chiskers, that I love you so much I don't want you to fucking die at age five in grateful little shit. How does, here's yeah. a, a WikiHow article. How does my cat apologize to me for being a real yeah. shit after I gave it medicine so it doesn't die from a lung disease of which there are thousands <laughs> for cats? How to make you my cat a, understand responsibility. Yeah. You raise an actually pretty good point about vets. I'm kind of worried about that now. Cause like, think about it. It's the worst. It's kind of like with you're the mechanic and he's like, you need a new farberator. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't trust you. I'm going to drive away now and see what happens and roll the dice and the check engine light comes on in like a week and ah, you're like fuck, fuck yeah. you was right if that happens with your pet then that's that's no good you don't like that that's a good cats don't have a check engine no, light you know what I mean don't. they just have shoe boxes they have, they have, and, and and so it's like you I, I don't how do you trust your vet because they do don't they understand it way better man, than you this do this is awesome you just gotta do whatever they say right yeah, this also, is awesome. man if we're being if we're being honest chances are for a change my dogs are in cahoots with that vet the dog coughs yeah, a little man. bit That's I go in it. and the vet's like oh yeah no he's got a bad case of kibble cough or whatever that'll be five hundred dollars and then he slips my dog some treats oh yeah awesome. oh yeah 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 your, your your parakeet is getting its beak wet on this Absolutely. on this deal fear not I don't so, trust anybody involved. It's so cool that we can be on the ground floor of this like anti-vax but for animals movement. Like it seems like not Come really. On, no, okay. it doesn't seem like it's all right. We're just Griffin. having fun. Then you have to make it all. Griffin, gotta get political. Irrelevant. God, Griffin, it's always getting political. What's next, Griffin? You and the vets are going to team up to write us emails and talk about how kibble cough is real and it's very bad and it costs five hundred dollars. <laughs> Huh? And are it's you, weird. Wait, okay, Griffin, are you involved? No, no, listen, Griffin's listen. Involved. Oh, it goes all the way to the top of big podcast. <laughs> listen, listen, I know what I just said, but I do, and I, I, I love our nation's vets, but, but only our nation's vets. And let me just say, though, it is weird how it's always $500. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. That is, that's weird. That's like, weird. And there's always like, a special food. Uh-huh. They're like, oh, no, he's got double butt worms. That's 500 big ones. And it's like, shit, I just paid you 500 big ones. Sometimes we get emails and tweets that we don't deserve. And I make it very <laughs> clear to people. It was, it's my dad and my therapist and my wife. And I said, I did not deserve this tweet. Do you agree? <laughs> they would say, no, Justin, you did not deserve it. You did not deserve the tweet. You did not deserve the mean email. People, you don't, you boys don't deserve it. You're trying your best. I feel like this past five minutes is one of those. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's one of those times when we're going to get the tweets and we're going to get the emails and we're going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah this one. <laughs> yeah, really beef tech. This one. Yeah, we were just kind of, we knew it even as we were saying it there. <laughs> want good yeah we knew it yep, yep, we yep, deserve yep. the tweets no no and i guess i'd say lord i apologize That's right <laughs> just like Larry, Larry but wait wait, sh- guys, says, wait maybe we can flip it in the end because i don't know that we said anything like fully like that identifies it when we said vet we weren't talking about veterans so maybe we oh can, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. we pin it on veterans and say like yeah i don't know why veterans always 
are charging five hundred dollars to fix our pets. <sighs> okay. Currently, I am. Do you think there's any veterans who went on to be veterinarians? Definitely. That's got to be confusing. That's funny, right? They probably did and, it for, and then people, and then people want to check them out to see if they're any good. Yeah. See your vet in the vet vet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. One more. Uh, uh, and then, and then, okay, wait, no, no, wait. And then he's selling his Corvette and you want to check out and see if it's any good. So you're vetting the vet, vet, vet. Oh, yeah. well, you did it. You got there. Thank you. Proud of you. Thank you. And he named it Bet Midler. So you're vetting the vet, 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 vet. <laughs> All right. You're vetting the vet, vet, vet's bet. You should have stopped at four. There's not a comedy rule of It's when five. I started cheating. Yeah. yeah. It's when I started cheating. You changed the letter. Yeah, I changed the letter. Change the letter. Um, doesn't work. Currently, I'm sitting in the stretching area of my gym. Sounds disorienting. <laughs> <laughs> There's no earthly way. <laughs> Welcome to the stretching area. Whoa. Whoa. Why don't you touch the ceiling? <laughs> oh, you can't. There it goes. <laughs> Welcome right. to Taffy Town. <laughs> <laughs> We've belabored this enough to, so that even our dullest <laughs> listeners will <laughs> you get it. On it now, get it. I had a quarter. This non-joke. I had a quarter in my pocket, and I just looked over to see my quarter rolling across the floor, landing against the stretching mat of the girl closest to me, who is like five feet away. My quarter is leaning up against her mat, and she hasn't noticed. Brothers, do I cut my losses and leave my quarter, or do I ask her for it back and try to explain that my quarter rolled out of my pocket to her mat, even though that sounds like an absolute lie? That's from Runaway Quarter in Run Run Runkunkama. Run I mean, it's not a lie. The quarter's there. Ooh, but, Ooh, but. Oh. did you just? I want before we get into the specifics of this. I would like to talk about quarters. Okay. Pennies, gross. Dimes, yep. nickels. Throw them all in the garbage. Now a dime, right? I'll fuck I with disagree. a dime. Yeah, a dime you is so dime, little. Okay. It takes up okay, a dime. so little effort to pick but it up. A quarter. Oh man, where I'm at in my life right now, you still will come across like um, a, a vending machine. You want to get yourself some Trident. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe you want to park a car and you gotta put a quarter in there. Or, right? or you all have a quarter. All still need from, from time to time. And to me. I so rarely use cash that I never even really encounter quarters. Mm -hmm. So the value of the quarter has actually exceeded mm -hmm. the value of the quarter. Wow. Due to rarity. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, due to rarity. How did I get a quarter? I, I There have been times in the past, like literal month of my adult life where I've been like, ooh, two quarters. Yeah. Like, get, like a little excited in my pocket. What's that jingle jangle? I don't remember getting these bad boys. Guess daddy's getting some trade in. I'll tell you the mistake I made uh, about two years ago. Just went to the yeah. bank. Hand him a ten dollar bill. Said, "Give me a roll of quarters," and then I just emptied it into the center console of my car, so I would always have a quarter if I needed it. But then, I <laughs> and that's why that high speed collision was in fact very so bad, incredibly <laughs> damaged. It was basically a dirty Travis. bomb at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> then I started to take for granted that the quarter would always be there. Oh, oh and then okay. one day I pull up to Aldi and I need to get my Aldi card out by putting a quarter into the cart. No quarter. And I'm the asshole running around with two dimes and a nickel like, hey, can I, will yeah. anybody trade? Will you Shit. trade? Who will we buy trade this one? Who's doing coin oh. trades? <laughs> <laughs> Who will oh. buy my nickel and dimes? <laughs> um, I'll tell you a mistake I made. Empty out my 401k for, and I got it all in quarters. I went to Dave uh -huh. and Buster's and I was like, I'm going to have the best weekend ever. And then they were like, <laughs> we do digital cards. We oh, don't man. do coins anymore. Oh, and I was like, fuck. I'll tell you who fucking loves quarters. Four-year-olds. Yeah. I hand BB yeah. three quarters, and she's, she's a king. Awesome, man. Gulp, gulp, gulp. No, she's four, guys. <laughs> like Tic Tac. Man, she's that, eight quarters. That's my 18-month-old. Great Wolf Lodge Arcade does the digital cards, and I tell you guys, when you start hitting the slots really hard, mm -hmm. trying to get the, you don't really feel that money leaving no, so no, much. No. When it's on a card, you you're trying to get that like Squidward. Oh that you yeah, need to complete your SpongeBob. I mean, the card. Gary, yeah, the be... Gary is the hard to get one. That's the, the chase. Gary's the chase yeah. one for sure. Just yeah. like the Toto in the Wizard of Oz one. That's the chase. Oh man, this sucks because she's stretching. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you can't, you can't. You, let me say this. You can't go over. You cannot no. approach. So here's the question: 
Would a sign help? I mean, damn it. You could still maybe even use the I'm not jerking off out here sign to like walk over and grab the coin. And that even the presence of that feels like harassment. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in this circumstance, the answer is no. Yeah. Because the amount of effort one would need to put into making a sign to explain that your quarter rolled over there, that's too much effort. We haven't established the value of quarters, though. This is what I'm struggling with is like, what do you have later in the day that you needed that quarter? It's got to be important because you got dressed for the gym. And you thought, well, I'm taking this quarter with me. Got to put this quarter in my waistband. The, o- <laughs> the only thing that makes sense is that they found the quarter earlier, in which case, easy come. No, you got to let it go. Baby. You got to let yeah, it go. Yeah, now it's on its journey, right? It's you continuing were, on. You were but a, a waypoint on this quarter's journey. Yeah. But if it's your quarter and your big plans, and this is the one gym in the world that sells big bottles of Powerade for a quarter, and yeah. you were going to slam that sweet blue stuff after your workout, yeah, yeah. you got to get that quarter yeah. back. And here's the thing. I think that this is, listen, this is not a perfect solution, but you could quickly walk over, murmur, I drop my quarter, and pick it up and get back. They will judge you. The person yes. will judge you. But you're in and you're out yeah. fast enough that yeah. your hope is you're not memorable. It's not a remarkable incident, right? But you can't again. You can't go can't. over there. Need a. You can't. Ah, oh, damn it! I was gonna say big magnet, but that doesn't work on quarters, does it? No, no, no. It doesn't no. work on quarters. They're probably zinc or something. You could train an animal to get it for you, but that's kind of a long thing. You have to just hope that they don't pick up the quarter. Yeah, yeah, will. yeah. You gotta wait. If I it see out. a big, beautiful quarter <laughs> with no one nearby, especially oh, just leaning there on my mat, calling to me. It's my quarter. Ooh. Now, here's you do need to be careful. You need, okay, while they're still stretching on the mat, you need to forget that quarter exists and keep doing whatever you're doing. Because if there's even a whiff of you staring over there and checking, they're not going to assume you're looking at a quarter. It's right. It, it's, I don't, I've never really been a gym guy. Really? And what? I, huh? I can't, no. I don't know. But Griffin, you're so beefy and strong. Well, I do it at home with all the big flower oh. bags of flour that I carry around. Oh, yeah. You do more of the rocky, like, found stuff. You no, it's mostly it. just big bags of flour I got at uh-huh. Costco. Um, okay. And I don't know what the sort of status quo is vis-a-vis talking to or looking at other people who are exercising. Because I'll say this. When I exercise in my office, I shut, I draw the blinds. Mm-hmm. I shut the doors. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. No one should. No one that. should have to see that, and I don't want anyone to see that, and I don't want to see other people doing it. And so I don't. I don't. This is unacceptable. I think if you go get the quarter, there's a good chance you may be removed from the premises. 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 Is there a way that you could play it? Like, oh wait, hold on. Sorry, real quick. Oh, oh, that was close. When you pick up the quarter. And if so it's still you, rolling, if it's, ooh, that's it. You fucked up already. If yeah. if you do this instinctively, if the quarter goes, bye, you stretch too hard, bye, and starts to roll away, if you jump at it then, and like then, grab it yeah. while it's doing its little like spinny yeah. thing, and you like slap your hand down on it, and they, they the other person's so scared, and you're like, look, and you show them it's a quarter, and they'll be like, oh, whew, glad you got right. it. That's and it. And also because this? Uh, you, you, your body will naturally make a noise that's like, whoa, when whoa, you get it. That'll coin. make it clear like, yeah, I'm not trying to connect with you or impress you in any way. Yeah. This is 100% about the quarter. Because if it were not, my body would not have made that noise in front of you, right. another human being. What about, what about, hey, you dropped your quarter? Oh. Leo? And if they say, that's not my quarter, you say, congratulations. You, you've passed. But what if they say, that is my quarter? Then you know something terrible about that. <laughs> you can fucking, there is no, there is no link that person will not go to to cover up the fact that they just lied to you. Yeah, it's time to ruin their life. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's time to ruin them. Put a, a, do an announcement on the gym announcer. <laughs> hey, everyone, we have a real sinker. <laughs> Everybody join me. Don't drop a quarter near Laura. Announcement, don't drop a quarter near Laura. She'll just gobble it right up like Pac-Man. Also, could someone spot me for a Powerade after my workout? I'm so yes, fucking also, thirsty. Also, I need a quarter. <laughs> Shit. You um, can also look over and say, 
penny for your thoughts, and they'll say, that is a quarter, and then you run away. You run away laughing. <laughs> Let's take a break and go to the money zone. It's better. It's better with you. Tell you guys, there's two things I love. What? Wait, I want to do okay. it. I want to do it. Okay. Welcome to my perfect site. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Justin McElroy. Welcome to my talk show, My Perfect Site, where we talk about my incredible 2020 vision. We talk to a guest who wants to get my abilities through artificial augmentation. Today, we have a pair of podcasting brothers, Travis and Griffin McElroy, and they want to get a little bit of my perfect site. It's boys. Uh, what, what what are you trying to get this incredible 2020 vision that you crave? It's pronounced McLeroy, please. McLeroy. And, uh, sake. We use we go to Warby Parker. They have affordable glasses, including prescri- with prescription lenses, sunglasses, progressive. They got they're very a very progressive company. They have blue light lenses and um this show feels weird. I don't know that I love this show. Yeah, it feels what's very the, judgmental. What's the, as- what's the aesthetic? I mean, it's um, cool. It's vintage inspired with a contemporary twist. I mean, every pair is custom fit with, you know, really cool lenses and shit. I own a lot of Warby Parker already. And when I, wow. when I wear glasses, it makes me feel kind of like a cyborg because I'm enhancing, you know, my vision through artificial means. Yeah. Now. Boys, I have a question. The the glasses sound beautiful. And I'm looking at you two and that you're you look great and the, the deals sound great. My big question for you, and I think a lot of our home audience is wondering this as well. Yeah. Why not just look at things with your perfect eyes? Okay, so like, you got yeah, and we uh, took a quiz. You take a quiz, but a fun one, not like a school one, and then they yeah. send you a home try on kit with a bunch How do you see it? Oh boy. With my glasses <laughs> that I'm wearing and you get it that your bad shameful glasses <laughs> that you're trying to replace. You do you you try them on. They send five five different like frames, and you try them on. And you see what looks good, and you pick them. And later they they send you the glasses, and it look and it and, looks good on your face. And it's very important for people like Griffin and I who have very large heads. Yeah, and uh, things that fit normal human beings don't always fit us. So we mm-hmm. use the home try on kits. Yeah, just to make sure it doesn't look like a novelty thing. Uh, this is one thing I can actually sympathize with you. If if you if we are us and you ever lose or break your sunglasses and people are like, just go get another nope. pair over there. They got a whole rack yeah. of them. Nope, no. no. We need a special store. Because sometimes they look like the anime character where they draw them with like really tiny circle glasses on their giant head. Yeah, that's us in real life. Uh, regular glasses look like Mr. Potato Head glasses on us as well. Yes. This got real personal. It did. And also, Justin brings up a great point where that me and Travis have to wear glasses because of our prescription, but Justin wears gunners for fun. So (laughs) I call them funners. You can try on Warby Parker for free with the home try on program. You order five pairs of glasses to try them at home for free for five days, and there's no obligation to buy. It ships for free, and it includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash my brother. Welcome to My Perfect Stamps. This is the show where Griffin and I uh, have perfect stamps because we use stamps.com. And Justin's our brother had dirty Justin, stamps. Yeah, used, yeah, Justin buys used stamps. Which he is buys stamps used old stamps hair. and he puts them in a book. He doesn't even use them to send letters or anything. He just gets them and then he looks at them. And he's still going to the post office wasting yeah. that time like a real goober. I don't get and it. Because you know why? You know what I heard, Griffin? What do you hear? He doesn't have anything better to do except yeah. go to the post office. For sure, for sure. Um, and he doesn't like saving on postage. He likes wasting his money on old dirty stamps that people have already licked or postage that comes from the post office. And he doesn't want to spend time with his family. <laughs> It doesn't make I don't that's the worst part for me if you yeah, ask me. That's the worst part for me is he says going to the post office gives me an excuse to not have to see the smiling faces of my children. And he said uh, my only friends are at the post office. And I was yeah. like, that's fucked up. But yeah, every day I go and buy more stamps just so I can see Postman Steve's smiling face because I like it more than my own children. Because Postman Steve doesn't like know who Justin is. Which no, is but Justin well, keeps I giving him, him gifts. He gives him gifts every time he goes to I'm, see him. I've been keeping it tally, and so far you guys are up to three 100% accurate statements that you have made, and I'd really like <laughs> to Stamps.com brings the same U.S. postal and UPS shipping services right to your computer. They print official U.S. postage and shipping labels. Well, you print them. 
24-7 without having to leave your desk or buy any fancy equipment. All you need is your computer and a standard printer, and they offer deals you can't get anywhere else, like 40% off USPS and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. And if you have really good peripheral vision, you can click and print those stamps while staring at your children's smiling faces or your cats or your dogs or house plants or like a puzzle you completed and then like lacquered and put up on the wall. Whatever you want to look at that you like more than going outside, which I totally get, you yeah. can do that. So don't waste any more time looking at your, your kids. Go to the, uh, and don't go to the post office. Go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code, my brother, all one word, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in my brother. That's stamps.com, promo code my brother, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Hello, I'm Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. And we host Still Buffering, a cross-generational guide to the culture that made us. Every week, we share media that made us who we are. Things like Archie Comics, Sailor Moon, and lots of Taylor Swift. And now that Riley's an adult, it comes with 100% more butts. And now I am totally comfortable with it. So check out new episodes of Still Buffering every Thursday on MaximumFun.org. Butts, butts, butts. Join in, Riley. Butts, 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 I want to munch too. I want to munch. Welcome to Munch Squad Evolved. This is an evolution of Munch Squad, a podcast within a podcast where we profile the latest and greatest of brand eating. I cannot. I can no longer rely on the um, the quick service restaurants and their press departments to give me what I crave. So uh, I've decided to help help Munch Squad along a little bit with it with the evolve sort of a this is called I call it people's choice. This is Munch Squad people's choice, and here's the deal. Okay, so welcome to Munch Squad evolve no. people's choice. <laughs> This is where uh, I here's the thing. I am a member of several different groups on Facebook devoted to restaurants in my area. Really? And I wanted to see what the people are saying. You know what I mean? Because you can listen to the press releases and what they say about the restaurants. But what are the people saying about the restaurants? That's what I'm okay. Gonna okay. Do. Okay. So this is fr- I'm not even going to say what groups they're from, because honestly, I want people to join them. And make things weird for everybody. Because this is just for kind of like us West Virginians to get in there and dish on the dishes, as we say, uh-huh. in the groups. But mainly it's reviews. That's what people like okay. to leave. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, the good Taco Bell. You know sure, what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I hadn't been to Steak Escape in Kanaw City for quite a while and thought I would drive through and bring it home for dinner. So this, what this person has provided is a justification for why they have decided <laughs> to go to a restaurant and purchase food. It's so important because a lot of restaurant reviews will leave out the fact that they wanted to buy right. food. While I was waiting in line, I saw a guy in front of m M&M Mart sitting on the curb and shouting out to people who ignored him. Mm-hmm. Seemed to be under some kind of influence. Mm. Suddenly, he was knocking on my window and told me, that the food at this steak escape was bad. Oh, huh? no. And he said the last time he ate there, he was sick for a week. So, okay, let me tell you the what this person has just described is a situation where they go to steak escape, uh-huh. they see someone yelling at people who won't believe them. They're ignoring them. And then they run and say, don't eat at the steak escape. It's bad. It's very relevant to this person's life. What's wonderful about this is it, it's a real world like example of why if somebody busted into wherever you are right now and said, I'm you from the future, don't right. do what you're about to do. You'd be like, okay, whatever. They're under the influence of something. This person is doing the Lord's work trying to keep yeah, you saying, from like, getting sick and <laughs> stay escape. I don't know how to catch people before they go in. So I'm just <laughs> waiting outside to tell people that it's like, don't eat it this one, okay? It made me really sick. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. 
Yeah, except this person, this review writer says, I thought he was just a little nutty and continued to pay for my food and take it home. I continue to pay for my food and take it home. I had COVID in January and smell and taste are still not quite back. At home, I opened the sandwich wrapper and my grand escape looked fine. I took a bite and as I did, I got a whiff of the sandwich. (laughs) Whoa, that's the order that it took. I guess it... (laughs) There was like 20 comments on this review where people were like, please explain to me the mechanics of I bit the sandwich and then later on I smell. Well, Justin, taste and smell are very good. Well, they're not quite back, yeah. right? I took a bite and as I did, I got a whiff of the sandwich. I smelled it and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to hey, her. Hey, here. <laughs> Get over here. Yeah. Hey, get over here and smell Mama's stinky sandwich. Oh yeah, that's. Hey, Mima. That smells fucking rancid, Grandma. You should not eat that. I already did. Fuck. (laughs) If only I could have smelled it before I ate it. Damn it. Ugh. It tastes fine. I I smelled it and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to her. It says in parentheses, she knew nothing about the That's guy. Important. That is important. That is important. I was going to ask. I'm Can't so glad yeah, that She's not biased. biased. Yes. Although, I don't know how cool your life is. If that happened to me, as soon as I walked in the door, I would be telling my wife this incredible story. I met an story. angel today. Yeah. Except you're the villain in that story, aren't you? Because someone was waiting outside to tell you don't eat well, here. Well, that's the thing. And then you still and did. And if you went home, and I'm not just saying this specifically to, about Sydney, but if you went home and told your wife the story, and whoever you're telling the story to was not there to see it, their first thing is going to be, and you still did it? Like, because... Yeah, it's impossible. That's how I feel, person writing this comment. I smelled it, and then asked my granddaughter to see if it smelled okay to her. She knew nothing about the guy. She said... It smells like poop. Well, that's exactly what I thought when I smelled it. Or, in other words, bad meat. Damn it. The guy wasn't crazy after all. No. It was bad. I think this is a great example of a sign would have helped. Yeah. Because if that if that gentleman had had a well-constructed sign that he had clearly spent some time working An on. An official-looking yeah, sign. Thank you. Maybe even framed Right? Then you see that and you're like, well, this isn't a spur of the moment thing. This is clearly a real issue that this person is concerned about. Now, here's the problem I have. Here's the problem, though. If this person had decided to solve this problem with a son, yes. we then, then it starts to raise the issue of if the sign's too good, uh huh. at what point are you like, I don't actually need to be a part of this equation. Yeah. Oh. And that bums you out because it's like, that's what I was planning on doing today. But instead I've made, you know, it's like a, a John Henry situation where like I've made myself. You could just put the sign there. Just put the sign yeah. there, right? And you don't need to even be there. And that's a well, But then the chance, that's, the chance of someone being sent out of that weird side door that all fast food places have to remove the sign yeah, you need and a defender, it, uh, uh, yeah. as, as, as a steward there. I mean, if the sign is too good, you could just start to think that it is sort of corporate warfare, like somebody yeah. from Beef Journey, like trying to di- divert. Sorry, be- Beef Journey. Yeah, yeah that's the main escape. competitor for a Steak Escape. Oh, uh, okay. I'm got, looking got, 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 at the got, got, Steak Escape menu. I've eaten at this restaurant before. We used to stop off there on our way to church and get a big sandwich uh-huh. on the way there to help us get lots of calories. To praise the Lord. And I don't remember them completely fucking going over the deep end, but they have they have so many different fry disasters. They have an item called Feisty Amigo Fries. Huh. I don't think that's right. It's called Feisty Amigo Fries, and it's got grilled steak, jalapenos, cheddar cheese, and Mexican seasoning, and pico on de gallo, and, 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 and pico de gallo, and sour cream. And somewhere in there is fries. Somewhere that's in there is fries, I bet. You can't just take the contents of an entirely different dish and put it on fries and say, is this anything? Yeah. Mm, Oh, boy. They also have something called a teriyaki crunch bowl. I bet that's good. Also, I bet that's really good. Hey, everybody trying to make that fry kind of thing a thing? That's what nachos are for. They're firm. You can lift up the whole thing. A fry Mm. is a soggy boy. You can't pick up the whole thing. Let's keep it. Poutine for fries. Right? I'm fine with that. That's Everything else on nachos. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments on this post, uh, I got food here like three weeks ago after waiting in line an hour. 
ended up throwing it away. It was horrible. Damn. Billy, did you say an hour? An hour at Steak Escape? Hey, Billy, come back. Are you telling me there was a moment where you'd been waiting a half hour and you were like, I could do this again <laughs> for Steak Escape? <laughs> for Steak Escape? Absolutely. I'm trying to decide now which one's worse, if you were in the drive-thru or if you were inside in line. Both are Both bad. Are bad. Both are bad. Damn, they got a sandwich called the Feisty Amigo too. It's the same toppings as the French fries. That's awesome. You got to get them together, right? Those are the amigos. Yeah. Got to have the clutch that matches the, the dress. All the ones around here uh, closed. The one on Fifth Avenue turned into a restaurant called Sabatino's, but now it's just closed. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, and Justin, then, I just heard from corporate. Uh, the verbiage we're using is they escaped. <laughs> they escaped. <laughs> well, the one at the mall transmogrified into a Charlie's cheesesteaks, which That's is easy. fine. It's an easy twist. Lateral lateral sure. move. Worse fries, better chicken. They tenders. kept all the same employees because they already knew. <laughs> they already knew how to their way around. You remember a, at a Steak grill. Escape the, there was a big thing there where they just had a big pile of potatoes and then they had yep. the crusher that would turn them into steak fries. And mm -hmm. you would be like exciting chef's table and then you're like let me get some <laughs> spicy zany amigo fries please and they're like okay and you're like mm, let's see how this <laughs> sausage gets made and then you watch them shove the potato in there and then they're like <gasps> trying to crush it and you're like fuck i made them do this this hard potato <laughs> work that. I hate, ha, my name is Daniel. I work at Steak Escape and I hate when people order the fries. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of my job, when people fries. order the fries. They bring you your, your feisty the second amigo worst fries. When they order anything else. Anything else. When they bring you the feisty amigo fries just covered in flop sweat and you're like, I'm so fucking, if I'd have known, no, it's, it's okay. They make us crush the potatoes. I don't know why the potatoes aren't pre-crushed. That's how they do it everywhere else. It seems like a better way of doing it. <laughs> they come sliced everywhere. Everywhere else they come sliced their fries. They make us crush their Potatoes are so firm. Fuck. I also remember Steak Escape had a gigantic container of seasoned salt out there awesome. for your fries. Because if to say, we don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> you have some idea. We don't know. <laughs> Go for it. What a wild restaurant. And what a wild podcast it has been sure. today. Here on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Oh, we hope you've enjoyed yourself. We sure enjoyed uh, spending a little time with you. Hope your summer's going Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. buddy. I hope you're having a great time out there. Slipping and sliding, I assume. You, Sorry, you know how you... What, sure why are you... Oh, my God. Why are you... My what? My watch just keeps trying to talk to him. I'm going to throw uh, across the Justin, room. Justin, are we eating Steak Escape today? <laughs> Justin, I went ahead and ordered Steak Escape on DoorDash. Something else I can help Order 500 Stop. sandwiches from Steak Stop. Escape. Watch. Watch. I'm not sure I understand. Start a tab at Steak Escape. If you're looking for a way to pass the summertime afternoon in a very pleasurable fashion, might I suggest the uh, Adventure Zone Crystal Kingdom, a graphic novel which we wrote and Carrie Peach illustrated, and it is fucking good. So good. It's coming out July 13th. I'm not just saying that no, either. It's a good And not just that. Book. Not only is it coming out on July 13th, which is tomorrow, if you're listening to this on Monday, we are also doing a live and virtual event. Uh, we've got special guests. And trust me when I say they're very special. You're going to really enjoy it. It's an absolute blast. Uh, and you can find out all the information at bit.ly slash TazGNLive2021. Get all the info there. And we have event-exclusive signed book plates, which are available from our partner bookstores. More info can also be found at that bit link. And you can submit your pre-order receipt to get the pre-order gift from First Second, our publisher. It's a Kravitz Lenticular Laptop Sticker. I will say this. If you don't know much about the book publishing world, uh, uh, here's what I will say to you to keep in mind. If you like this series and you want us to be able to continue to make them, uh, the thing that most publishers look at and, and, and kind of the whole publishing world is built this way is the first week of uh, uh, book sales. So if you could buy it like the first week, that would just, or pre-order it, that works too. That would just be the coolest thing you could do. Yeah, you're so, so cool. cool. 
We got new merch over at McElroyMerch.com, including a new pin of the month for the Gushy Wolves, which is a, a, a fantastic, just a fantastic joke from the Ether C prologue series. And uh, sales for that benefit the Innocence Project, which works to exonerate the wrongly convicted through DNA testing and reforms the criminal justice system to prevent future injustice. There's other stuff on there, too. There's an It's Trash sticker from the Bim Bam TV show. There's a beautiful green stoneware mug with the Taz logo on it. There's uh, finally some Besties merch on there uh, a t-shirt if, if you're uh, one of our many listeners of the besties so check check all that out uh, and speaking of Adventure Zone the first uh, episode of the, the new season Ether C is out now we've been doing the prologue but now this is the first episode of the regular season uh, that's up now um, I do some streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Travis McElroy, if you want to check that out we've got a YouTube channel McElroy Family a lot of fun stuff on there uh, and this is just a personal plug for me to you. Check out The Besties. It's one of my favorite podcasts. I listen every week. I learn a lot about video games. Uh, and it's my brothers, as well as Rush Frustrick and Chris Plant. Uh, it is one of my favorite podcasts. Go check it out. Thanks, Trap. And thanks to Montaigne for the use for our theme song, My Life is Better with You. Uh, if you if you follow Montaigne on Twitter, you've probably gotten some tips and hints about some movement. Let's just say some some movement in uh, the music publishing world vis-a-vis this song and you hearing it and seeing a music video for it. So that's all great. Thank you, Montaigne. And thanks, Max Fun, for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org, check out all the great shit that they have there. I'm sorry I call it shit. It's not shit. It's good podcasts. Let's hear it, Griffin. Let's hear the final, final Yahoo. Yahoo. This one was sent in by Davin. And Davin sent it in, and it was uh, sent it in today. Oh, Sent it in today, this morning. Uh, it's a Yahoo Answers from, uh-huh. and it, this one was asked by Batman. Ooh. Hmm. Asks. <laughs> Batman asks. <laughs> does anyone know where to, does anyone do any repairs? Does anyone know where to get repairs done on my... <laughs> Dad, does anyone know where to get that? Does anyone know a good dad repair shop in Houston, Texas? <laughs> my name is Joseph McElroy. I'm, McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.